one always seems to damp it down and then put a bit of um, echo on the on it afterwards. And I think that's partly because the one thing that always is the bugbear is the business of um, sympathetic buzzing off with other things, isn't it? Mm -hmm. It always seems to be something rattling and, <laughs> and banging somewhere. Well, considering that we did it all in the same room, which was mm -hmm. yeah, considered right. unusual. Yeah. Yeah. Full-blown you know, bass amp going in the room. And, uh, yeah, I was asking for snare rattle. So uh, we're here at State of the Art Studios with Alan Parsons, uh, who engineered Dark Side of the Moon uh, with Pink Floyd, and uh, we're here almost 40 years later. And uh, it's going to be Alan's going to be miking up Nick Mason's Ludwig drum set here. So <clears throat> let's talk about that. So you generally used um, uh, AKG D19s on the toms. I that's my best memory. I mean. Um it, it could have been uh, it could have been other um, dynamic mics, but I've I've always favoured dynamics for for toms. But I'm sure we'll get we'll get something pretty close, provided the kit itself is pretty close. The snare mic at the time was was an 87. Mm -hmm. um, I've since favoured 84s on snare, but the 84 hadn't come out in 1972, so mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure I would have been using an 87. And this would be a top snare mic. Did you do yeah, I, did, I, I didn't generally. Uh, I've, I've never favoured uh, making the top, uh, making the bottom rather. Mm -hmm. Always, always done fine with the uh, the top mic, and then lots of top end adding. Mm -hmm. that, that gives you the necessary uh, fizz from the from the snares. Mm -hmm. Now, for overheads, we have this mic here. Which uh, tell us about this mic. This is um, a standard telephones and cables STC forty thirty eight. It's a ribbon mic. So it's a figure of eight that's going to pick up from uh, both sides and that'll, that'll be uh, on overhead so it'll actually pick up a little bit of the room re reflection as well which will uh, put a bit more air around, around the kit. But uh, this was, uh, this was a, a, a Beatles favourite, Jeff Emmerich was always uh, very keen to use these as, uh, as overheads. Probably just one because mm -hmm. it was mono. <laughs> right. but, uh, and what are the qualities of it that you like? Um, they're very, very sort of smooth uh, sounding at the top end. You, you, they'll, they'll sound duller than uh, uh, condenser mics, but uh, you add top end to them and uh, they make the cymbals really uh, shimmer nicely. So, uh, so I, I've, I've been using these, these mics for years and years and always had good results with them. So, so you still use them today? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. And now they're cold, they've got a nice right? sort of vintage look to them. Though. Yeah, they do, right? They were they're heavy, they're magnetic. Uh, they yeah, yeah. Well, you don't don't them. get a don't get a tape near them. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not that we're in the world of tape anymore, but right, uh, exactly. Um, and then uh, on the kick drum, there's uh, something like a D20 or yep, a D12. That's a D20. I don't remember if we had a front skin on, did we, Nick? Do you think? Probably not. Probably not at the time. So we might end up taking that off. There's a blanket in there, so I haven't heard it yet. We'll, we'll see. So. Uh, Cool. Probably, uh, probably work on the damping of that if necessary before we actually stick a mic in there. Right. And then, um, so now because the band was um, generally tracking together, <coughs> there wasn't much of a, an additional room mic used back then. And it was more of a no, dry it, sound anyway. It, it was a very dry sound, uh, and um, you know, any, any uh, wetness was just done with, with artificial reverb. Uh, so we, uh, we went for the driest, tightest sound possible with mm -hmm. maximum separation. And, uh, and we have actually uh, those EMT plate reverbs here, so we can run that. Real uh, ones, not yeah, plugging ones. The real, real ones, ones. Oh, great. the real deal. Good. Which is fun. And they have a valve one and a solid state. But EMI also, of course, had the full echo chamber with the full tiled, tiled room. Which is why we recorded footsteps. Yeah, well, we, we, used, footsteps. Used, no, used, well, we used to use it for sound effects. So I seem to remember <laughs> recording footsteps. In that. Yeah, at the end of um, on the no, road. No, that's not true because the footsteps were at the f parquet floor in number two, and none of you were there. I did, yeah, it, really. with, I did it with Peter Thank James. <laughs> Can I hear the kick? Mm. Uh, that's Tom's ringing, presumably. Yeah, but the toms are very loud. <laughs> I don't think it's going to be a problem. Well, we could put some tape on these. 
any of them ringing more than any of the others? the snare though, that, that's what I'm hearing. Well, if you hit, hit the snare. Is it that one? Yeah. We'll see, we'll see. But there, there's quite a bit of ring on the, on the toms. But we'll see how it is. Right, right, right inside, about halfway halfway point inside the So we've got an 84 for the hi hat. Right. Now, what, what? Is that the right there? The first one to the right? Nick? Sorry? Is that the right and there? Middle. The middle one? Yeah. Yes, the 20 inch. <coughs> Do you remember whether I would have come in from there or from there? That's the no not, idea. Not, not a lot of room to get. Right, I'll tell you what. We probably. Uh, I'll tell you what. We wouldn't have had three drums. Oh. There would have been two, so we could lose. That. I wouldn't have had three up until uh, well after, uh, well after the war, and it would have been. A, it would have only been. Um, Live as well. Now, do you want to play me the track? Shall I yeah, next door and just tell me you know, what we're going to hear? Sure. <laughs> Why don't you just play? You can just literally play the whole album and <laughs> have you play along with it. Right? <laughs> That's pretty much it. I mean, uh... you mentioned earlier Nick wasn't happy with the, um, the drum sound originally uh, when you're doing that. What? Yeah. Um... What changed in what? The miking. You know, I mean, it, <laughs> I, I'm not, not sure if you'd forgive me for saying this, but I'm not sure it really did change that much. Okay. Just, just that we, we kind of uh, got used to it. Yeah. <laughs> because, like I said, I mean, um, there was a, a point at which the band would just show up, they'd start playing, and we'd start recording. So I mean, yeah. there was no, there's no sort of checking everything. It was just, it just seemed to be right. Did you have a, a sort of a period of? Experimentation with mic placement. To, uh, In the beginning, to probably yes, but uh, you know, once we once we settled on the mic choice, that was. It, you know, every track was then done in that placement. Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. And only recorded on uh, four tracks. You know, kit, everything else, snare. Yeah. That was it. So stereo, stereo, everything, kick drum, snare drum. So four tracks. The whole album was sixteen tracks. Went to um, it went to two generations of sixteen tracks. With bounces and things. Yeah, reduced uh, reduced stuff down to make more tracks available. Do you find that that, that in some ways the limitation that, that was annoying at the time is one of the things that helped make yeah. things better? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. There's nothing like making decisions. That was the fun, you know. That was the hmm. uh, fun part, making making things work. And knowing that you pretty much had to commit to them. Mm. Were you recording like effects? If there were effects on guitars or whatever, would you um, would you make a decision and record out to tape, or would you kind of? Most of the, most of the guitar effects were actually David's. Yeah. He was actually producing the, the sound from his amp. Yeah. So, uh, apart from simple tape delay or plate reverb, that was it. There was mm. Not much else to do. But of course, there, was no, there, were, there weren't any digital boxes back then. Sure. So everything was, all effects were done with tape. <laughs> any any time-based uh, uh, effects in the reverb area or the uh, delay area were all done with tape. For, you know, I found a miking formula for drums that, that works on yeah. everything. Mm. And, uh, you know, I might EQ slightly differently from mm. session to session or drummer to drummer, but... Basic mics I use have 
have proven themselves uh, over and over again. So I just uh, just go with that. What sort of room would the uh, drums actually originally recorded in? Was it? Uh... Um, well, they, we we did some uh, some track recording in uh, Studio Two, which is the middle size studio, the one normally associated with the Beatles. Yes. Did quite a bit in there, and uh, rather, I think rather more in uh, in there than than in Three. But we did do. Uh, us and them in number three, I remember. Right. But money was definitely studio two, remember that? Concentrate just on sort of a basic rhythm, you know, bass, yep. bass drum snare and hi hat. Yep. <coughs> just uh, can you talk to me through the cans, Alan? I'll try. Yeah. I, I, mean, I, I don't know which just tell me what you want.